Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Baseball Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia, and the Welsh and I are jumping into some fun on the best ball side over on Underdog today. That's right. We're doing a 12-person mock draft right now. Well, actually, not a mock draft. It's a real draft, but it is for the Dinger competition right now that's running over on Underdog Fantasy and uh, is a great place to play. It's something different. It's 20 rounds of best ball with a unique format here. It's a point structure. Welsh is going to talk you through it, but we want you to go check it out yourself because we're doing one of these today. Welsh has done a few. I'm going to do a few more. I've done a lot of football best ball over on Underdog in the last couple of years, but the MLB product is one that I'm just dipping my toes into. So I'm new. I got the first pick. I took Ronald Acuna. Welsh, as we continue to talk about this draft and how it unfolds, let's talk about what this best ball is right here with the dinger over on Underdog, because right now, drafts are constantly filling. You can do a 30 seconds per pick here. That's what we're doing. You can also do slow drafts for the eight hours. And Underdog Fantasy right now in this dinger competition is doing $750,000 in prizes with first place being a cool 100000 Welsh. That sounds pretty good to me. I hope we win. I do too. I just made my pick, by the way. So we've got the point structure. And here's the thing that differs a little bit with underdog, which is pretty cool. And there's an advantage. But then there's also some strategy that you got to replay here. We have three positions, pitcher, infield, and outfield. So outfield stays the same. Pitching stays the same. Infield, it's all the guys. Shortstop, second base, first, mm -hmm. uh, third, doesn't matter. You're filling those guys out. So what does that mean? Well, that means that outfield and pitching is a little bit more of a premium in the infield. As a matter of fact, I'm up right now and I took a pitcher to start Spencer Strider, get those points in. I'm up and there's a lot of infielders and you can see positionally some things change. There's not a ton of outfielders. And I think I'm going to flip this up because I think outfield is a little bit more of a problem. And I am going to take Kyle I Tucker agree. because that's what I'm, I'm telling you, Joe. It's like the that we have so much more to work with on the infield. We could play around with outfield's going to get away with it. We, we're saying in normal, normal ish drafts, outfield's getting away in this format. It is. But again, it's points. These positions, 20 rounds building this bad boy up. Underdog is very fun. And we are plowing through this on the dinger. And this is a $10 entry, just so people know. Uh, but you could do way more than that, uh, or less than that if you want to. You could also do one-on-one -on -one, uh, yeah. drafts. You could do, uh, I saw that you could do other 12 teams. You know, th there's so many different options here, which is cool. So if you don't have a lot of money and want to, like, play around with the underdog situation, I think it's a great way to do it. Uh, Welsh and I were talking about doing a head-to-head -head one just for right. S's yeah. and G's after the show is over. Uh, but to your point about outfield, Acuna went first, then Soto, Judge, Mookie Betts, Otani, Julio Rodriguez, Bryce Harper, Tatis. Uh, so obviously, yes, outfield is definitely something that is flying off the board. After Tatis, it was Carroll, it was Alvarez, then Spencer Strider went uh, to you, the Welsh. So uh, you went up and uh, decided to flip things around here with a pitcher and then Matt Olson, Cole. So let's talk about your selection of Strider. Yeah, I mean, like this is a points format. So this should be, you should feel a little bit more comfortable than anything in the points format. I do. Um, pitching, <laughs> pitching doesn't put up the same point structure in underdog like that hitters do, but the pitching is still like a premium. And here's something I've noticed about myself. I can let pitching get away from me in these formats. So getting Strider at uh, almost the wheel, I was at 11, knowing I was going to come back and be able to get, I kind of thought I might be able to get like a Matt Olson or something like that. Uh, it didn't end up happening. So I wanted to take the pitcher to lock that in. And then I did pass up any of the big power for Kyle Tucker. Stolen bases aren't going to mean as much here. But again, I think outfield is really going to get away with us. So, you know, play your points-ish format in these and just know the strategy between the three positions. And uh, Joey, you're up. I am up, and uh, I'm going to try right now to take Robert if I have enough time. Oh, did I? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know if I got auto pick there. That's that's a problem. Well, Trey Turner, that's fine. Uh, I'll go ahead with Turner. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch around and take, uh, actually, the outfielder as well. I'm going to continue to pound this outfield situation here because, as I said before, to your point, I think Robert is the right pick there. But we were talking, and I totally missed my pick there, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I turned the autopilot back off right away and I'm back in here. So Turner, Acuna, Robert, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm at peace with that. This might be the only fun share that I have of Trey Turner uh, all year long. You're not so a big, I've got 20 uh, picks. 
Yeah, you're not a big Turner share guy, so this will be probably your I'm not a big Turner one. share guy. No. no, I'm not. So after Strider, you got Olsen, Garrett Cole, Tucker, Freddie Freeman, Bobby Witt, uh, Alice Garcia, Austin Riley goes, then Trout, Schwarber, Jose Ramirez, Vlad Guerrero, Pete Alonso, then I took Turner and Robert, Raphael Devers, then Corey Seager, Rosarena, Simeon, uh, and then Welsh, you're up in a few picks here. And just to let everybody know, also... Again, you can sign up for the underdog contests, uh, whether it be the Dinger or anything else here. Uh, and so $10 to draft this one. Remember, and this tournament closes on March 28th on opening day. So if you want to get in on this tournament, 750000 in prizes, $100K for the winner. Uh, you get your first deposit matched up to $100 when you use that promo code FPMLB. That's easy to remember. It's for Fantasy Pro. So FPMLB, that's the code you want to use. You get your first deposit match up to 100 bucks, And again, that's 10 free dinger drafts if you think about it that way. Yeah. And I like to think about it that way. So use that promo code. Get in. Start your underdog. Welsh, what do you want to go here with this next pick? Well, our boy Ozzy Albies is still here. And uh, he is that's technically... That's why I would have taken, my friend. So. Yeah, he's technically the third highest projected uh, on the projected points here on underdog. And I'm looking at... I think I'm going to take him. Corbin Burns is there. I will say there are some great pitchers that are sitting out out there so i'm gonna take my first infielder i'm gonna go with ozzy uh again i'm trying to focus on power as much as i can goldie is another one i was looking at in this format the power isn't quite there but tons of hits low strikeouts but i might go back so i've, I've now filled out one of each position and mm -hmm. i love the braves apparently so I. i've got i've got strider oh, no, I and tucker i haven't sorry i, I have like the pitchers that are still out there but we have not had a big run on pitching go yet I think I might. I don't love the power bats that are here. Um, and th again, this is going to be the tricky part. Like Altuve is still there. You're still going to get like big names that are out there. I'm just not sure what I'm in love with the the outfielders. Well, you're they, up on the clock. Right I know. Now. I'll I know. let they you make your pick stink. because I think I agree with you. There are some pitchers on the board still, but I do think they're going to start going. Gossman, Wheeler, Castillo. That's the grouping that I'm looking at. Yeah. I'd love to get Castillo back to me. That's the guy I'm hoping for, but I don't know if he's going to make it. The Welsh took Gossman. That's yeah. probably the first guy should be off this board. I agree with that. Hopefully that shoulder's doing okay, too. I know he was a little iffy yeah. last week, but everything seemed to be going his way. Gunnar Henderson went next, so right out of my queue. So I filled my queue, so I don't make the same mistake. This is what happens when I'm too busy yapping about all the fun things at Underdog. I end up with Trey Turner, but that's okay. I think that's a good thing. You should always have something fun of some guys that you don't have once in a while somewhere else. And best ball is perfect. It's a perfect format there. Now, that's true. this is a different best ball than we're used to in some other situations. Uh, we've other sites that we've played on. I kind of like this because it is very simplified. And I think it's fun. And I think the way you broke it down with the approach, Welsh, of looking for the outfielders early, that outfield well in a 12-person league is going to dry up pretty quick. Uh, you see one of these teams actually has three outfielders already. Uh, Jay Soroka, seven. Uh, I don't know if that's Matt Soroka's brother. We can only uh, I just assume saw, I potentially. Saw, I saw Michael. Michael yeah. Soroka, I mean. No, Michael Soroka. What did I say? John Soroka? Matt. You no. said Matt, but I saw Michael. Matt Michael Soroka. Soroka yesterday. You saw Mike Soroka. How's he doing? How's the family? He's doing, I was like, I just went up to him. I'm like, how's the family? How's everything going? How's the family? How's everybody doing? Yeah. All right. Let's look here because we've got uh, a few yeah, picks left up? to me. I am going to look for a pitcher here at some point. I want to point uh, out. Nola Glasnow on the board. So is George Kirby on the board, too. I might even double up here. I think there's some uh, outfield is horrendous. pitchers continue to fly. I just want to point out. Outfield is horrendous. So when you're talking like ADP and stuff, and what pick are we at right now? We're in the fifth round of a 12. We're on mm -hmm. not even into the 50s. We are talking like Jazz Chisholm doesn't work great in the in this points format, but it's like Springer and Suzuki and Jordan Walker outfield has completely depleted. So just throwing that out there. Well, luckily I have Acuna and Luis Robert. So that I'm is nice of you. That was okay. smart of you. That was really smart. Yeah. Well, I was taking Robert and then I was even contemplating a third one at the time, but unfortunately again, Trey Turner kind of messed that up. All right. So here we go. So, um, unfortunately Castillo Wheeler, all those guys fell off the board. Nimmo even went off the board too. I'm going to go ahead and take glass now here. Uh, right out of my queue, and I'm going to take Kirby. So I'm going to take the two pitchers here back-to-back -back and see how yeah. this goes. Have a little fun here. Try out this theory. Give me uh, two guys. I think it'll be a little undervalued potentially in the marketplace at pitcher. They have ace potential, but again, we only have the one guy popping at a time, so that's okay for me. So I can sustain some missed time from glass now if I build this pitching staff deep enough. So we are a few rounds into this. Uh, Welsh after Kirby goes, Bregman goes off the board. 
Uh, we've got a few picks up to you. Are you going to look at another outfielder potentially? As you have mentioned, it's I, it's flying fast and furious. I want to, but they're just so bad. There's so many good other positions. There's much better infield, much better pitching. I, I'm regretting a little bit. Like, I mean, I have Strider Gossman, which is ridiculous, but I'm kind of regretting based on how this outfield is looking. I think it's, it's hard to stomach taking Nick Castellanos when... Manny Machado is still there, or when Royce Lewis is still there. I, I'm a little torn here because there's a million infielders I like. I might just dive in, like dive really heavy into this heavy pitching here and just have a big advantage there. Because the only thing, when you have like three positions, I want to try to dominate one. And I think something I've done in the past in some of the uh, underdog drafts is like, I, I then try to play the balance card a little bit and then I suffer in other spots. So it's like, I don't want just to fill up this outfield. I don't want to take away from this advantage. I think that's their pitching and infield. So I, I'm a couple picks away here, but I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to pivot. Uh, Tariq Skubal is still out there. If you're looking at pitching, I mean, there's still some really great pitching out there. I'd like to take a few of these guys off the board for everybody else, maybe a Logan Webb or a Tariq Skubal. And then I'll have kind of like that first starting core of pitchers. Uh, and then I'm going to have to cross my fingers for outfield. God, it gets better. We're that in the fifth Number round one strategy, right now. get your outfielders. Get your outfielders right, especially, like I said, when one team takes three. And this is also a good lesson, too, just for drafts in general. Every draft is a snowflake, right? Everyone is completely individual as Welsh is making his pick. Uh, looking at some of the projections, though, Lane Thomas, very high in this format. Uh, same thing with Santander, Jorge Soler because of the power uh, those guys bring there. So some decent options there. You mentioned Jazz Chisholm. He's still on the board, too. So is Riley Green at the outfield. Taking a shot at Loya Menes is interesting. On the infield side, you got guys like Casas, Walker, Hoskins, all still available. Uh, Ketel Marte. So again, really interesting format, something different. Welsh, where did you go with your pick? You went Logan Webb. So you are leaning heavy yeah. after Ozuna goes right before you and Goldschmidt goes right before you. Leaning heavy into it. I like it. Yeah, well, because again, like I, I feel very comfortable with infield right now. I've got quite a few really good guys. The outfielders that are there, I think it's all kind of a group. And if I, if I miss on one, like I don't want to reach too far to sacrifice, like I said, that other spot. So that's what I did there. Uh, I now have three insane starters. So very heavy, getting an advantage, and I'm going to have to build from it. But man, look at that. 6-1 Ian Hap just went. Like that's the, that's the territory mm -hmm. that we're in in this points format. And that is going to push me. In this, I think I'm okay because, uh, yes, obviously I want bopping, but I don't think the strikeouts. I, I just think this is an on-base guy. I'm going to go with Evan Carter. And I'm not a crazy, crazy Evan Carter guy, but I think this is a good spot. And I actually, Evan Carter, Kyle Tucker, kind of similar players. So I want to dip my toes back into that outfield. Only one infielder so far, but boy, they're still good. Yeah, I was uh, oh. hoping that Royce Lewis would make it back to me. He did not. He went right a few picks before your Carter pick. So Ozuna, Logan Webb to the Welsh, and Royce Lewis, Ian Happ, uh, Carter, Suzuki, Nola, uh, five picks for me uh, till I'm back up here after Nola, O'Neal Cruz, Max Freed. So again, some pitching. The Soroka team I'm obsessed with, the way they're drafting. Now they just took Chisholm. <laughs> so they continue to just pound the outfield over and over again. I'm looking at Soroka's roster here. Machado, Julio, Trout, Yelich, Chisholm. So four outfielders are ready for that it's one. It's an advantage uh, for him, man. It is. It absolutely is. Uh, I've got two pitchers right now, one infielder, two outfielders. So I'm going to try to go BPA here. I've got Peralta, Grayson Rodriguez, Jackson Holiday, Xander Bogarts, CJ Abrams, and Lane Thomas all in my queue. Got a big conversation on the Sunday TV show about Lane Thomas, too. You know, if you stripped the name Lane Thomas away from the stats of Lane Thomas, and you just look at what he did last year, Welsh. If you said, here's a guy with 28 homers, 20 steals, hit 260, scored 100 runs, sure. uh, drove in 86, that sounds like a second-round player to me. And I understand the concerns, and I understand maybe it's going to be tough to repeat that, but I still think he's going way too late in drafts, Welsh. Yeah, I, I think really part do. of the problem is just, you know, nationals. People don't get excited about the nationals. Well, we played on the nationals last year. So no, no, I know, but repeat repeatability with like a garbage team that doesn't uh, offer a lot of support. Man, look at that. Jorge Soler, 71 overall. Mm -hmm. 
Lane, hey, your boy, I'm digging Lane, Lane Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. I'm not even waiting. I don't care. That's what I'm doing here. Now I'm looking at the infield structure too. The projected points here. Uh, Xander Bogarts, again, another guy I keep talking about in all of our leagues. Again, 2020 potential here. That's a lot of points. We're getting points from different ways. And I like players like that that have a decent batting average. He's going to hit in the 280s too. So I'm going to go ahead and take Xander Bogarts. Ooh. So I took another infielder, took another outfielder. I like this so far. Turner, Bogarts, Acuna, oh. Robert, Lane Thomas, and then the pitching staff, Glasnow and Kirby. This is fun, Welsh. I'm having a good time at Underdog. You should have a good time, too. Sign up. Use the promo code FPMLB. Get your first deposit up to $100. That's 10 free Dinger drafts. That's the one we're drafting right now is the Dinger. Again, $750,000 in prizes, $100,000 to the winner. If it's Welsh, uh, what are you going to do with that $100,000, Welsh? That's oh, the man. If it's Welsh, um. Mm -hmm. I'd probably buy a whole lot of fake mustaches and wigs for you. Maybe like it's good. It's good. One a different type of mustache. Could I could I get a different mustache for every single show of a year? Well, I mean a hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money. Uh, is that I would take part of it and I would fly out and visit the Welsh in yeah. Arizona. Yeah. And I would, I would fly uh, me, out. you, cousin Donnie go to a ball game. I think that sounds like a good time. Hey, hundred grand, that's a lot of money. Maybe I get us a little box, huh? Maybe I get us a little luxury box. All of us sit in there. They keep bringing us beer and hot dogs and helmet Sundays. I think that's the way I to go. I hope you win. I think that's part of it. Yeah, I, I hope, hope you I win, win now. Too. I'm with you. There you go. My cue so, yeah, is getting uh, depleted here, though. Yeah, I can understand that. Let's go to some of the picks here and see what's going on. So after I took Bogarts, Casas, Cole Reagans, Christian Walker going off the board. Uh, then after Walker, Wyatt Langford, a player we're very high on. Dylan Cease, Adley Rutschman. Freddie Peralta, Adam IQ, Lazardo, Adam IQ, <laughs> Riley Green, Welsh, you are on the clock. What are you doing, buddy? Uh, you know, actually, I like him a little bit more in this format is Cody Bellinger. The strikeouts cut down, um, the power obviously in question, but he returned to Chicago. So I'm going to take Cody Bellinger, who fell down to the 80s as my second infielder. Wish he qualified at the outf in outfield for this. That'd be awesome. And then I kind of want Jordan Walker. <laughs> Jordan Walker is just sitting at the top of the queue. Riley Green went right before me, and that was someone I was hoping was going to come back later. So we're not getting any sneaky stuff happening. There's no sneaky sneaky. No, but there's some value still on this there's board, value. Uh, I mean, I'm just looking at it right now. I had no problem filling the queue. Uh, our good friend, uh, Justin Steele, friend of the show, he's still yeah. out there. Joe Ryan's still Stay out there on the pitching him. board. Arenado's still out there. Cedric Mullins in this format's interesting, too. That's a player, you know, we haven't talked too much about. We've touched on him here and there on a couple of shows, but really Mullins is a player that if he bounces back to two years ago, productivity, you talk about a value you're getting, especially in a format like this. That's huge. Yeah, um, that's, I know you just, just the injuries. I'm not a big fan on him already dealing with the injuries uh, so far this offseason. That's so. the problem, uh, but that's why you're getting the discount, too. So after uh, you went ahead and uh, took Cody Bellinger, Logan Gilbert goes next. I know you're not sweating that one. You are not a fan of the Logan Gilbert this year. Um, yeah. My cue is filled, though. I've got Holiday in there. I've got Abrams, Joe Ryan, Churio, Bobby Miller, Jung Ho Lee, Matt McClain, Nolan Arenado. Again, still some value out there. This is about supply and demand, which is something we talk about quite a bit. You know, in this particular format, too, as guys are going out of the queue now. Uh -oh, Steel that's not as fun. Can never that's get Steel. I can't get my dear good friend, Justin Steele, anytime in any draft. No one wants me to ever have him on a team. Marte out of my queue, Walker out of my queue, then Yoshida goes, Quan goes, Torres out of my queue, Steele out of my queue, Arenado out of my queue. Oh, Welsh, what's happening here? I uh, know. Torkelson after, excuse me, Joe Ryan, then Torkelson, a couple picks left to me. That's okay. Uh, I, I Bobby Miller's the guy that I really want here. Oh, that's the one that I'm targeting. Uh, I think that's a great Top selection here. Queue. Zach Eflin might be the pivot if I have to, but I really want Bobby Miller here, especially in points league. I want those wins. I think he's going to get those W's. Uh, then you're looking, even though Bobby Miller has projected less points than Eflin, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Bobby Miller if he makes it to me. And he did, Welsh. So I'm very happy about this. Uh, after Torkelson, Churio, Keller, Bobby Miller. And then I can go infield again or maybe outfield. I feel pretty good about the outfield. So I'm going to go ahead and take another infielder. Uh, CJ Abrams, again, in a points league, it might be too tough to pass up, giving me all those Stolen bases. He gives me some power there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take CJ Abrams too. So 
Glass now, Kirby, Bobby Miller, Trey Turner, Xander Bogarts, CJ Abrams, Ronald Acuna, Luis Robert, Lane Thomas. That's what my squad looks like so far. Uh, let's take a look at Welsh's team here as I'm scrolling around here. Underdog's so easy to use too, which I really like. Very user-friendly. The app is terrific too. I'm doing the draft on the desktop version right now, but the app I've done drafts on Same for football piece. tons of times. Uh, you've got Kyle Tucker, Evan Carter, Jordan Walker in the outfield. You've got Cody Bellinger, Ozzy Albies in the infield. And then you've got Bobby Miller, George Kirby, and I'm uh, sorry, the wrong, wrong section there. It bounced me back. Sorry about that, Welsh. You've got Ozzy Albies, Cody Bellinger, then Spencer Schreider, Kevin Gossman, and Logan Webb. It bounced me back because uh, obviously we're moving fast and furious here, which I like, by the way, too. Everyone's yeah, got their I mean, full. We're Everyone's like halfway done. We're, we're practically halfway done at 20 rounds. We're in round nine. So this is how quick these roll. Yeah. So I got a little too confident about that infield because now I'm looking at the infield and I'm like, mm, these guys aren't great. <laughs> these aren't great infield <laughs> options anymore. And there's so went, many of them. Well, if you had to do it over again, would you still take Strider or would you just pound the outfield harder? Um, I probably would have still taken Strider because I like that. But okay. I mean, to your point, I could have gone like Matt Olson. I just I wanted like an, uh, a judge or something and they just did not fall to me. My positionally, I wasn't set up to be able to get judge. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to look at Question this and I'm going to end up hating too. everything about it. Carlos Rodon still floating out there. Uh, I know it's a player we've talked quite a bit about. Uh, you know, I think we have some varying opinions on him. So far, not been the kind of spring. Is that worrying you at all? Yeah, it's worrying me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the the velo looks like it's kind of like tapered down just a tiny bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Command looks all over the board. It doesn't mean I won't draft him, but I moved him down a little bit my board. I mean, he's he, he's kind of moving from intriguing to many people to starting to jump off. So I think I can, uh, you know, I can get him a little bit later if I want to. But yeah, I'm I'm a little bit tenuous about him right now. Yeah, uh, I was tenuous to begin with. Um, if he starts to fall a little bit more, then perhaps uh, I am more apt to continue to take the leap. But as of right now, it uh, looks a little spotty there for me when it comes to Carlos Rodon. And I'll tell you what, that Yankee rotation, too, is starting to look more and more suspect. Uh, so just one of those things. So, Welsh, you are on the clock right now. You're making a pick? Yes, I am up. Right. And, oh, man. This is tough. All right, I'm going to do this because I would just like him. and I think he'll play well here. Jackson Holiday, uh, something that happened oh, earlier. We didn't really talk a nice. ton about, but Wyatt Langford went in the 70s and Jackson Churio went in the 90s. And I would have taken Churio in this format because he would have been outfielder four. I wanted him in this really, really bad. And that didn't work out. But Holiday, I think, is kind of a perfect compliment. So I now have three at each spot. So now this is really going to be about building depth. But... I need to build a plan for this outfield because you just scroll through those names. Uh, one thing that does happen is you do have some of the DHs that pop up over here. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually giving some thought to Eloy Jimenez in this because he qualifies oh, in outfield. Too. Yeah. And, you know, he's been a hit monster in spring. I need outfield. He can show some of that bop. There goes Nico Horner. I think I'm going to pull the trigger on that and get Eloy. So I've got a little bit of outfield depth. <laughs> And I just like the potential pop with contact. He can't stay healthy, but he is a fourth outfielder here right now. So <laughs> these are the guys that get pushed up in this format a bit. It, it's kind of hey, gross. Well, Brandon Nemo went in the fourth round, I'm pretty sure. So that that tells you what this is all about here. And to you know this point, if you were in those five active outfielder leagues and you're playing in a deep league, you better hit outfield early and often. Uh, yeah. You just better do it. You better be prepared because it is not as deep as you think it is. Sure, some players have flexibility, but again, it just flies faster than you realize. So have a plan for it. Draft it early and often. Also have a plan for Wednesday because Wednesday here on our Fantasy Bros MLB channel, which you should subscribe to, are, is it fourth annual? Can it be already? My goodness. No, third annual. I, this is, I'm uh, putting the cart before the horse. But a third annual. Yes. My first full fest oh, that's coming up that's I've only right been, the first full fest this is this is like full-on welsh this is welsh fest 1.0 was it this is welsh you know what maybe we should rename it but it's a working be. title welsh fest all right what all we're right. really talking about is our fantasy fest and our fantasy fest is happening wednesday right here on our channel from 4 p.m eastern to 8 p.m eastern we've got an incredible group of guests we got eno saris scott pianowski 
We've got uh, the best minds in fantasy. They're going to join us for some short segments, half hour piece. Then at the end, we're going to do a mock draft. It's going to be super fun. So whether it's tip strategy, whatever it is, you want to dominate your leagues. This is how you do it. You watch the fest and it's live, which means you can partake in asking us questions, being part of the show. We love when you're all part of the show. We always like to have a fan interaction there. So if you haven't already subscribed to Fantasy Pros MLB channel, that's how you do it, folks. And when you subscribe, you have the ability to ring that bell till it goes ding for notifications. That's what we all want here as well for you to be a part of the channel. And if you miss it, that's okay. Maybe you've got something going on that day, something else happening. Guess what? That's all right. Instead, you can watch it back the next day on the YouTube channel. So once again, it's 4 p.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern this Wednesday, the 13th of March. So join us live at 4 p.m. Eastern or whenever you can or watch it back. Fantasy Fest right here in the channel. But again, you can only be part of it if you subscribe to the Fantasy Bros MLB channel. Drop your comments below for all the videos too. We're giving away free stuff all the time here on the channel. And ring the bell for notifications just in case you forget. And we go live, you get the little notifications, you go, oh, I want to watch Welsh and Joe talk about fantasy baseball. And that's what we're going to do. And it's great. Steve Gardner is going to join us, too. It's it's a great group of people we got, Welsh. Yeah. I'm very excited for it. My last two picks I had to make while I was running the promo because I can multitask. So what I did was I took Zach Geloff of the Oakland A's, who I think is a player that basically just carried over all the good work he was doing in the minor leagues and he's being undervalued for the same reason Lane Thomas is because he's playing on a bad team. And this is the point in the draft where you start to take advantage of guys on bad offenses who are still going to put up points, still going to put up productivity. Geloff's going to do that. And I took one of your favorites, an outfielder, Jaron Duran, who was still on the board. How do you like me now, Welsh? I had him on my queue. I absolutely had him mm. on my queue with the outfield. Uh, I feel like I can pivot a tiny bit because I had that weird Eloy pick. Um but he was definitely one of those players that I wanted. I also want to point out, you know, funny thing that happens in these. Anytime you do like points leagues drafts, you'll see this happen. Mm-hmm. But if you're wondering, anyone's out there, we are at pick almost 130. Hassan Kim is a player that has not been drafted. Bryson Stott is a player that has not been drafted. Those are two inside the top 100, especially Hassan Kim, uh, top 100 players that have been touched yet and are going to continue to fall. So catchers as well William Contreras is going to continue fall so catchers aren't going to go a ton here and uh, we saw Nico Horner drop outside the top 100 I think it's just fascinating to see these players we're kind of accustomed to uh, just keep dropping and dropping and by the way you want to talk about focus on teams BHB group the guy in front of me zero pitchers at this standpoint whoa six outfielder four infielder zero pitchers and this is round 12 he's probably going to just end out all pitching well, look, there are some pitching values still on the board. You Darvish on the board, Eduardo Rodriguez on the board, uh, Barrios, Sonny Gray. Like, I mean, Justin Verlander, if you want to just start taking shots on the Eovaldis and the Hunter Browns of the world, too, you could certainly do that. Tanner Bybee is kind of buried in this ADP, folks, yeah. over on Underdog. Uh, pay attention to that if you're doing the dinger or whatever contest you might be doing. And again, Welsh, I kind of like the flexibility here in Underdog, too. It's There's, again, different size leagues. You could do the one-on-ones. You could do, you know... The 12 persons, the 10 people, no matter what you want to do. If you want to do a slow draft, you can. If you want to just sit around your board and, you know, bang out a draft like we're doing here with 30 second picks, you could do that too. Flexibility is good. The site's easy to use. All the things that I look for when I'm looking at best ball. And I'm very pleased with this because, again, I'm somebody that, like most people, probably more exposed to the NFL product of underdog and some of the other offerings they have. I haven't done a lot of uh, MLB best ball. This is the first time I'm doing it. I like it a lot. I want to do more of it. In fact, after this is over, we're definitely doing a one-on-one draft. You just do make a country and song. I, you're like, I like it. I love it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. When we were in Nashville a couple weeks ago, Welsh and I were at the hockey game together, yeah. Fantasy Pro's trip, and every time they scored a goal, they played that song, that Tim McGraw classic, they and did. they scored six goals that night. So let's just say by uh, by the third period, I was singing that song quite a bit, and I might have had a cocktail or six. I don't know. You know what we just should saying. do, man? Oh, I just had I had an idea. I don't know if I should make public, but like you know, we're talking about prizes at Fantasy Fest and stuff. Uh huh. Is there a goal we could reach that we could somehow unleash? Get Tim McGraw on the show? No, no. Unleash <laughs> the karaoke video. Oh, I don't know about that. That's something, you know. I guess that, it would be a YouTube be issue. Joe, Joe's saying his song's so good that there might be a YouTube issue, a copyright, um, when not, he uh, let I'm the not, house down. 
I'm not embarrassed by my karaoke by any you stretch. Be. I don't think I should be. No, you shouldn't I, I be. It was I'm amazing. Pretty solid when it comes. Yeah, to I, I want to release it to the people if we were to hit some goal. That's what I'm saying. All right. Speaking of goals, <laughs> uh, just subject. to kind of recap some of these picks here. Uh, no, because again, we've got a lot going on here. Uh, right up to you. You took Michael King, one of our favorite guys. So credit and Josh to you, Naylor. Welsh. That is fantastic. And Josh Naylor also both out of my queue. So. Good job on you. I see the pitcher value here, and I know that team is still out there looking for pitching. So I don't know, man. I, I think I'm going to continue to hammer this because at some point that person's going to have to keep taking more. Ha Young Kim still on the board too, Welsh. I, I think that's another one too that should not be there. At certain points in drafts too, I always recommend this to people, price enforcement is important. Uh, you just Sometimes you just got to price enforce and you've got to just understand that that's an important thing to do. Uh, one pick away from me. Uh, Ezekiel Tovar, by the way, another player that I like a lot, uh, who I think is going to have a, a very good season this year for the Rockies. We're going to talk more about him, too, in our sleeper episode. I'm going to go ahead and draft him. Uh going to be 22 years old. I know, he, you know, some swing and miss last year, some issues last year, but I still really believe in that guy. And, man, oh, man, looking at the pitches out here, you know me. I like me, Eduardo Rodriguez. I'm going to go ahead and take him. I love that signing for the Diamondbacks. So I've added him to that rotation, which is now glass now. Kirby, Bobby Miller, Eduardo Rodriguez. So I like that. Still need some more pitching depth. Uh, so we are good on that. So Welsh, with your roster looking like it is right now, let's review that. Uh, we can figure out where you want to go. Strider, Gossman, Logan Webb, Michael King. That's pretty darn good, my friend. Yeah. Albies, Cody Bellinger, Jackson Holiday, Josh Naylor. Then Kyle Tucker, Evan Carter, Jordan Walker, Aloy Jimenez. I think your Jimenez pick makes a lot of sense here because if Jimenez in a contract year performs up to his ability... Well, that's an incredible value you've gotten here with a player that has flashed 30 home run potential before. So I think you should feel pretty good. I think you should stop beating yourself up about the Aloy pick. Yeah, I, it's, like I mean, it's a little spring training. That's all I'm saying. Like, we've seen the talent from okay. him before. We know there's 30 home run potential. We also know when he's going, he hits for a high average. He's not a big major strikeout problem. That's why he works in this format well. The problem is, is he gets pushed up here because of spring, because the guy's hitting 500, and he doesn't stay healthy. So that's the battle that you're doing here. But I think I can stomach the I can stomach this with um, having a couple starters already, having you know Tucker, Carter, and Walker. I love. So I'm fine with it. I think there's a lot of upside. But like I said, like if we were starting over and I didn't have the 11 spot, by the way, even if I did, I might have just gone like four straight outfielders. Didn't that guy near you just go all outfielder to start? First, like four or five rounds. Ah, uh, let's see here. Uh, it is possible. I will. I will take a look at that team when I circle back around here. Oh, right now, I just got sniped too. Stanton, Justin Turner, Pasquantino off the board. Berger off the board too. Uh, a couple players I just threw in my queue again, who I think are buried in ADP. I don't know if I should say their names because I feel like Welsh is going to take them from me if I do. I? Uh, but we're friends. We're friends. Uh, Brandon Fott still on the board as well. Uh, pitcher wise. Brian Bayo still on the board. Your best friend, Luis Arise, still on the board, too. It is I a like points Arise league. Here. Yeah. Again, in this format, a little bit different. Uh, Verlander still floating around. Do you think that that's something people are going to find in their drafts, too? No matter if it's best ball or somewhere else. I'm more apt to do it in best ball when only one pitcher is popping a week here in this particular format. Yeah. Because if he gets healthy and he's Verlander, to me, that's a tremendous selection this late in this draft. I completely agree. This is the spot to do. I mean, I might do it here. I I, I think I'm going to go with a pitcher coming up here. I just took Andres Jimenez, pick 155. Projected points are actually pretty good here. Uh, I just don't have a lot of boppers on the infield, which might be a little bit of a problem. But there's a, you know, I mean, I, I kind of hate to be the guy to take your guy that you do. You know what? I'm going to leave him for you. No, um, you look. All's fair in love and war. All right, yeah, you I make your pick. Two seconds, dude. Oh, if I can take him. Did you get in time? I don't know. Yes, I did. Justin, Justin Verlander. Verlander. I got Verlander. No, in, so I'm, I'm gonna take okay. Verlander. I feel good about my staff. It's okay. SP five. I like. I like I having him at an SP five. All right. <laughs> I think that's a terrific value here. Pareda is still on the board too. There's some value at infield. Um, looking like at the Volpe rest of the board pick. right now. Yeah. Well, the Volpe pick was uh, the next pick for me, so that was uh, yeah. Less exciting. Uh, I love that selection there. That's a player we've been talking about quite a bit. Still a lot of pitchers out on this board, too. Looking at my pitching staff, I think I might want to beef it up. I might go back to back here because I don't see a whole lot of value. But, you know, it's funny. In a points league, Arise is a really intriguing player. There's one Arise. more infielder, too, that I'm contemplating. Christian Encarnacion Strand, who I think should not still be on this board. I don't think the projections are high enough on him right here. And this is what you do. 
you watch this show, you go out and run your own dinger draft, and you listen to some of these guys that we have that are buried in this ADP on underdog, and you start fixing to make your drafts as uh, you're making your plan, as Derek Brown would like to say. I think we should have that. I think we should have a, a Derek, Derek Brownism Brown? in more of our shows. Yeah. Like, are you um, fixing to make a cheat sheet? Like, I feel like that's something we, like we almost should be need. Doing we're going to need like software. the pros dictionary with like a Welshisms section and like, you know, the, the D bros. Oh, those the D bros pros. Yeah. That's what it is. And pros P R O S E. See what I did there? Yeah, I like it. All right, you're up. So what are you I doing here? You got English back show. to back. I'm taking Encarnacion Strand. He should not be on the board still. And then I'm going to take Nady Avaldi, who, again, always has risk. But last year, 144 innings, 132 strikeouts. I mean, at one point, he was one of the most dominant pitchers in baseball for a stretch uh, for about two months there last year. So is there, you know, potential for downside? Of course there is. It's pitcher, but it's also Evaldi, and we've seen that a lot. But Texas is still going to be a good team. Looking at the pitchers right now, you got Brian Wu still on this board. Bayo still on this board. Gavin Williams still on this board. Kyle Bradish, nobody's touching. That should tell you everything. Kyle Harrison still on this board. So uh, Taj Bradley, Ryan Pepio. Let's talk about the Rays for a second, Welsh, because that's a question I have for you. At some point, they're going to start to get some of those guys back in this rotation in the second part of the year. If you're putting early money on guys, you know, in this Rays rotation, are you betting on Taj Bradley? Are you betting on Pepio? Are you betting on one of those guys sticking when, say, a Jeffrey Springs returns at some point? Yeah, I'm not sure that Springs is going to take away from either of them. It's tough. I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, I want all those guys, but I kind of want you, Taj and Pepio. I want both of those players. I'm starting to become a little bit more optimistic that Taj might be the guy that has the big turnaround. See, like, I think Pepio is safer. I think Pepio's got the stuff, the pedigree. He's one of, he's definitely one of those guys where it's like one tweak, the classic uh, raised type of guy. But with Bradley, I think there's this intangible with Bradley that he could go from just like, oh, cool, we fixed him to he could be a frontline starter, you know, as they work through that cutter and uh, him just having just a little bit more time. Uh, last year, I mean, losing his cutter and being sent to the minors, that's a whole thing to go through. If you have it locked in through the rest of the year, I feel like he could get into that frontline stuff. So I don't know. I guess if I had to pick one, I'm starting to lean Taj Bradley as my choice. J.D. Martinez qualifies at outfield here over on underdog. He has not he signed yet, but that's an intriguing one to me, too, because I do think he signs. And as of recording this, we still don't have a landing spot for Snell or Montgomery. Uh, will they ever sign? I don't know. Tune well, in tomorrow. Snell did put some eye emojis on Instagram, on his Instagram oh, story. He just well, that means everything. He just did the whatever it's called. He threw to his story. You know some what the eye emojis. eye emojis are? It's called it's the 11th of March and I haven't signed with a team. Well, you're on the clock. What are you doing? Yeah, well, pff, I'm not taking an <laughs> outfielder. When you said before, you're like, oh, this guy is here and this guy's gone. All the outfielders are gone. It is an absolute garbage yeah. pile, um, mm -hmm. which is pretty crazy. So. I'm looking at a bunch of bad players, and I'm trying to figure out which <laughs> bad one I want. I'm going to do this. This is probably going to upset you. I'm going to take Edward Julian. Oh, it upsets me a little bit. A little uh, bit. I like that pick. Uh, so I'm proud and upset at the same time. Yeah. Um, surprised you didn't go Nolan Gorman instead. But I, 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 I had, him, I I had them both. I had them both there. I was going to say. I was going to say, I Just mean, there's definitely some depth guys out here. right More now. at bats in the in this points format for Gorman, especially if he's going to be leading off in some spots. So or being at the top, be at the top of the lineup. So I'm going to do that. And then they want to go back to pitching Walker Bueller. I'm not into Walker Bueller a lot this year, but in this format, it's actually kind of interesting. Also, Brian Wu, if we're going for some upside. Wu is in my queue. That's yeah, for sure. It, Cutter Crawford, Pepio, Taj Bradley. Those are the kind of pitchers I'm looking at right here. I'm thinking about J.D. Martinez. I might pull the trigger if you don't here. So I'm just putting that out yeah, there. I'm going to go with Wu so you can have him. But I do need to focus on outfield because I've only got four. And I've got five at least. At, actually, I have six pitchers, six infield. So I've really got to focus on outfield. I only have four as well. But uh, one of them is Acuna. So and the other <laughs> so one's bad. I know Roberts. that's like I two. pretty good about that. That's the equivalent yeah. of two of them. It is. It is. Uh, and only one's going to pop at a time as we're talking about this format here. So you have the pitcher, the infielder, the outfielder. Uh, it's a fun format, the dinger. Again, $750,000 in prizes over on Underdog right now. First place gets a cool $100,000. And, of course, uh, this is going to be running all the way up until opening day, March 28th. So you can get in there for 10 bucks, draft the dinger. 
put in 20, put in 50, put in whatever you're comfortable with and go do some other best ball drafts over an underdog. And I love the best ball because you don't have to worry about stupid trades. You don't have to worry about um, making any sort of adjustments in lineups. You don't have to worry about waivers. You just go ahead you Draft make your picks and forget and sit it. back. Draft and forget it. I won a bunch of football stuff last year on underdog. So I'm excited for baseball this year. And I'm dipping my toes in the water. Welsh has been doing more of these than I have. So I am in this now. FPMLB. That's the promo code to get the $100 deposit match. Again, that's FPMLB. So make sure if you haven't already, when you sign up, you use that promo code so you get the $100 deposit match. Again, that's 10 free dinger tournaments, basically, with the $100 match. So you might as well do that. So go ahead, download the Underdog Fantasy app, or just go to underdogfantasy.com and go check it out today. Uh, so far, I've got, uh, let's see, two picks away. JD's still on the board. So is Starling Marte, if he ever would play a full yeah. <laughs> season. Uh, that could be fun. Junior Caminero, by the way, still floating out there. Too. He is. He right. sure is, isn't he? Little interesting to me. Best ball Junior to Caminero be... sitting out there. Hmm? Little bit. Little bit. You know, infield is actually pretty deep when you start to look at some of the guys buried in this ADP that we've talked about. Volpe was very cheap. Uh, that was a guy that like lasted a little bit too long there. Uh, so one more pick to me. Uh, again, the ratio of players, I've got five pitchers, six infielders, four outfielders. So I definitely want to grab another pitcher and an outfielder here. That's probably where I want to go as much as I'd like to take Caminero. Um, Mountcastle's on the board too, another guy too. Just going to give you 25 bombs and just give you some points. Edwin Diaz also still out there, but again, different format. So, all right, Chapman goes off the board. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the dice and JD Martinez hopefully sign somewhere. And you know what? I can take a shot on the bounce back of... Uh, a young pitcher in Taj Bradley, Gosh. too, who I think, you know, so far has shown you in that first spring start. Again, don't want to make too much out of it, but look pretty sharp in that. I feel like this is a player with a high pedigree. He was just rushed to the big leagues last year. All the offseason interviews that he's given and the recent ones since he's reported to spring training have been very positive in terms of the focus of Taj Bradley. That he's like, yeah, I was a little overmatched. Yeah, I lost some confidence sometimes to make certain pitches in certain spots. And it didn't help the cause that he didn't follow that Grayson Rodriguez path where he got sent down and Rodriguez got straight, came back, crushed life at Baltimore in the stretch run. And that's not what happened with Bradley. So I think if you're looking for a guy that I want to say is the upside of Grayson Rodriguez, but has upside, that's definitely the guy to me that you can get late in drafts, possibly out there. Welsh, a couple picks coming up to you. Uh, Lance Lynn. Henry Davis, Carlos Correa, Sanchez from Philadelphia, all off the board. So what's in your queue here? What's in your wallet that you want to go ahead and uh, put on well, your roster? Well, uh, I think I want Parker Meadows, uh, another one of those guys that might you know get opportunity to be hitting higher in the lineup. I need outfielders. Will Benson's another one I'm looking at. I mean, that's what see that's what stinks. Here are the guys <laughs> in the infield. Camonero, a Candelario is still out there. I'm kind of regretting even. Cole Keith is still out there too. Another young player. I know a lot of people are high on him. Too. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, pitching, you know, you you could take a shot on Walker Buehler. There's still some some shots to be had, but it's rough here. It's really rough on Cutter the Cutter Crawford's still out there too. That's another guy I think is worth taking a shot on. Um, there goes and Brent Rooker was one of those. So I mean, Aaron really, Savali, another guy too, buried in ADP. How many times have we seen Tampa Bay take a picture? Yeah. Like Zach Eflin just last year, every single time. I'm starting to low-key get some late shares of Savali because I just want to see, can they get something out of Savali that we've never seen before in Cleveland? Because it seems to be that's the special sauce. That's what Tampa does better. And when they identify a guy, we always talk about this, pay attention to who the Tampa Bay Rays sign in the offseason. Welsh, one more pick to you. So who do you think is lined up first for you? I think I'm going to go with Parker Meadows here. Um, okay. Nolan Gorman just went right in front of me and then coming back. <laughs> if I, if I'm smart, I should be disciplined and attempt to go. Yeah. So there you go. I should take another outfielder, but I don't know if I'm that disciplined enough, by the way, if yeah. we were to restart <laughs> and through your first six picks, how many do you think need to be outfielders based on how this has gone? Like how, if you restarted, what would you, what would your focus be? Well, because I had the one, one and Acuna, I feel, you know, I actually feel pretty good about what I have. I'm a big fan of Thomas and Duran. I probably would have gone outfield with my first three picks, seeing how this went. So I'd have to go back and look at the board and see how that ran off there. The yeah. Trey Turner pick was not what I wanted to do. I wanted to take Robert, so I did get him. 
I mean, if you circle back in ADP, would it have been a Michael Harris or somebody like that or Randy Rosarena? Like that's kind of the pool that you're looking at. Uh, potentially even a Mike Trout. Uh, I think he might have still been on the board. That might have been how I would have started this because outfield, as you said, was going to go and it flew off the board. We are in right now. Let's see the 18th round. Welsh is on the clock here. We are almost done here. This has been fun. We're flying through this bad boy. Uh, and again, make sure FPMLB, that's the promo code on underdog to get that $100 deposit match. Go enter the dinger for 10 bucks, 750,000 in prizes. That seems pretty good to me. So Welsh, you ended up selecting Benson. So you feel pretty good about that selection for Cincinnati? No, I definitely don't feel good about that. But no, that's not what I'm like. Hey, everybody, no, big win for me. But yeah, he, I mean, he's going to he's gonna at least be a, a platoon side player. There's big power. There's big speed. Um, the Noel V. Marte suspension just kind of clears out a little bit of the mess as well uh, overall on that team. We know Strand is now going to be first and Candelario is going to be over at third. That maybe takes Strand if he were going to play in the outfield away and that gives Benson a little bit more run. So there's just upside. Like I thought about going Marte, but I think Marte is boring and I don't think there's any upside. And that was outfielder like six for me. So in this format, I'd like a player that can explode in random times and maybe try to carry a week. Marte's never going to do that. It, Marte would be a better player if I suffer a bunch of injuries so I have a live body. Benson's a yeah, player that he's might always explode. hurt. That's the problem when it comes I, to Marte. That's my point. That's my, why hurt. I didn't take him. It's just very frustrating. I mean, I, yeah. he's floating around my queue for three rounds now. And you can see we haven't taken him yet, too. It's a very frustrating selection there. Uh, Caminero, Mountcastle. Michael Garcia having a hell of a spring too. Paul Skeens and Cutter Crawford out there too. I could see myself having some fun here. Maybe taking. Do you think what, what's the ETA for Skeens in your opinion? You're a prospect guy. I don't think Skeens is going to be until midseason. That's my personal opinion. Well, it's best ball, so midseason. But is that enough innings here to make a best ball impression? You could stomach it. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely stomach like the half a year. I have no problem with it. Maybe they'll surprise. Maybe by the way, it is pure manipulation. Like they're they're lining it up that it sounds manipulating, but it might be till next year. He could be up April twenty fourth or May first or something like that. That would make a lot of sense if they were purely manipulating it. So if you're gonna take him, why not take him at the end of one of these rounds? I got no problem with that whatsoever. Well, at the end of the uh, 18th round, start of the 19th year, I'm gonna make this loop. I'm probably gonna take Cutter Crawford because again, I like the guys who are, you know, starting with their team. I think that's probably the way I want to go. So Crawford's a guy for me. Uh, and then uh, finally, Marte did go, by the way, the pick before me. So I didn't have to make that decision. Caminero, I think, is going to be up very early. So I'm taking Caminero, putting oh. him in my roster there. So uh, so Caminero added to this roster. Encarnacion Strand, Tovar, Zach Geloff, CJ Abrams. What a dynasty league I've selected here in best ball. But <laughs> it's a young man's game, Welsh. It is a young man's game. We are now in pick 19-2. Uh, uh, Gray, Josiah Gray goes off the board next. So a few picks to the Welsh. So Welsh, again, we're kind of in the end game here. Uh, if you had to do things over again, would you still have leaned into pitching as much as you did in this mock? Well, not mock, I should say, in our in this actual draft here. Not as much, no. No, I mean, I do, I'm going to say this. It, one thing I did well for myself, like I have probably the best pitching staff and I'll be very, if they stay healthy, you know, Gossman's a little bit dicey there. Like this could help carry me in some of my deficiencies. So I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, but I, it, it's kind of like a revisionist thing. I probably have to go back and look and be like, who was there if I had done that, you know, like that type of thing. I would have the question I asked you through six rounds. I kind of think you need to have three outfielders. Like I, I would have done that focus on this one That's specifically. Fair. I wish I had gone three outfielders through my first, which would have sacrificed some of the pitching. But I think part of my problem was the players that were there were turning me off from wanting to do that. So it's like, you know, would you rather have taken trying to think of like a mid outfielder? Would you rather have taken Jazz Chisholm or Logan Webb? Would you have rather taken um, a with the way pitching's been buried in some of the ADP, some of the guys that we got later? Um, I think that's a clear answer in this yeah, specific format. Uh, I do think you would take the chance on Jazz Chisholm there instead because we talked about Bailey Ober. We talked about Michael King, who you drafted. We talked about some of these guys we like who are going later. Tanner Bybee was kind of burying ADP again. Uh, use some of this knowledge when you go and you draft over on uh, Underdog today for your best balls because 
There are some guys that I think the ADP is a little bit lower than it should be. Some of the rejections might be a bit a little lighter too, but that's the whole point of why we're doing this today to help you with some of these best ball leagues. And you know, no matter where you play your best ball, but underdog definitely, I mean, we're just about wrapped with this in 45 minutes, super fun, 12 teams of the dinger, but you could do head to heads. You could do smaller formats, bigger formats, long eight hour clocks. If you don't have the time, you want to take some more time in between selections. You want to just burn and churn here with the 30 second clock like we are today. All those options are available for you, so it's really cool. Colt Keith still on the board. Braxton Garrett, Brandon Lowe, uh, Brandon Lowe, excuse me, Eddie Rosario still on the board too. What do you think of that Rosario signing by Washington? You think he's going to get the main at bats at DH? Um, yeah, and and also if they want to play the outfield, because do you remember that they were like, oh, hey, Dylan Cruz, James Wood, they should be on the roster, and then they, I think they've committed them to be like double A. Like I think their commitment to throwing them in the minors was why Rosario makes a lot more sense. I think Rosario is a player they hold all the way up until the trade deadline and they move off from him. And that's when you're going to get one of the young guys. So there you go. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. I'm looking like, at I'm going to snap up uh, Paul Skeens here, by the way. I was going to say your last pick. You have some fun. Yeah. There you yeah, go. I'm going to have some fun. Uh, I'm going to end out with Paul Skeens. My final pick there is ADP 231. I got him at pick 230. Not there bad. You go. Not bad. Uh, Tyler Glasnow, Kirby, Bobby Miller, Eduardo Rodriguez, Eovaldi, Bradley, Cutter Crawford is my rotation. What do you think about that for best ball? You go to That's war pretty with good. That? You know when I I actually I almost was considering taking because I think he he could potentially get more innings is Ricky Tiedemann. Ricky Tiedemann might be a fun one to snap at the end of a of a, one of these underdog drafts, even for you, Joe, just because there is talk that he might end up uh, you know, getting up early, especially with some of the injury, the Gossman stuff, Alec Manoa, and he could get some significant uh, innings. I don't know if it'll be enough, enough. You, you would probably want to focus mm-hmm. a little bit more on guys that are going to get actual like big innings. Um, but Tiedemann might be a fun one if you want to have some fun at the end. I'm going to take another guy that I actually just drafted in another league too that uh, last couple of years, he's just been right there every single year, 20 plus homers, uh, plays the infield. It's going to get at bats because uh, the Los Angeles Angels uh, have no one else to play. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Brandon Drury. I mean, Brandon Drury just keeps on producing. He's been my favorite late pick recently in some drafts that I've done in terms of like looking for corner guys where you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to take him. I'm just going to plug him into the end. And it's another infielder there because my infield is a little bit more punch and Judy. You know, it's more like stolen bases, kind of pecky to death. And that's fine because it's points. Punching Trey Judy? Turner, Xander Bogarts. Punch and Judy. It's a it's an expression. You don't actually punch Judy. You don't want to punch her. I've She's never very nice. heard of, of punching. It's a punch and Judy lineup. It's that's that's like we call it. It's like a like a, like a little a boxer who doesn't have a lot of power. You know, is a punch and Judy kind of guy. That's I, I don't know where it came from. It's just the expression. And I know if there's somebody who doesn't know expressions, it's you. Trey I'm, Turner, yeah. Xander Bogarts, C.J. Abrams, Zach Geloff, Tovar, Christian Encarnacion, Strand, and Caminero. But I'm going to try to end this last thing here with uh, Brennan Jury. Rosario is interesting. Polanco is interesting, too. I like him in the middle of that Seattle order. I thought that was a, a good move for Minnesota, a good move for Seattle. All the way around, everybody wins there, especially Julian wins in Minnesota, getting more at-bats. Uh, Lau, Keith, uh, Mountcastle. If Mountcastle qualified at outfield, I would do that, but he's an infielder here, so that's not going to work for me. And Rosario, I don't know, just not enough upside. So I'm going to take Brandon Jury because I think that's the guy for me that I want to go ahead and draft. And that's it. The draft is completed just like that. Boom. About 45 minutes start to finish from when we began. Now we shall see who wins $100,000. And as a reminder, again, go to Underdog Fantasy, download the app, 20 rounds for the dinger. It's a really fun contest. We just did it. $750,000 in prizes, $100,000 to first place. But do not, again, do not sign up for Underdog without using the promo code FPMLB. So you make sure your money goes further. You get that first deposit match up to 100 bucks over on Underdog Fantasy. So get drafting today. Welsh, that was a good time. You and I are going to do many more of these uh, off Little 1v1. Air. And a few 1v1s as well, which uh, maybe we should uh, live stream that one day. Who knows? But again, make sure you're part of Fantasy Fest. You're live Wednesday the 13th right here on the channel. And if you miss it live, don't worry. It's going to be here on the channel. So subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB. Drop your comments below. And don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. So you know every time a piece of content drops here on the channel and leading off live in just a few weeks with Welsh and myself every single midday, Monday through Friday. Baseball's back, baby. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for the Welsh. I'm Joey P. Have fun playing underdog. Bye, Punch and Judy.